What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Profile Builder tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to use the extension Profile Builder in order to create a profile or an assembly that creates railroad tracks inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you're looking for more information on Profile Builder you can find that information at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Profile Builder. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create an assembly inside a profile builder that creates repeating railroad ties as well as two extruded railroad track pieces. And so you could apply this to other things as well, really anything that has um, a profile that goes along a length and then repeating pieces. So these principles work for just about anything like fences or other things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to delete out my default model. And we need two things um, in order for this to work. The first thing we need is we need the profile of our railroad track. And then the second thing we need is to create our component, which is going to be the um, the uh, railroad tie, the wood railroad tie. All right, so to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like a canvas or like a sheet that I can work on when I'm working on this. And so I'm going to make it about the size of the tie. So in this case, we're probably going to be at about six inches by six inches. So I'm just going to draw this at six comma six. Then we're just going to come in here and draw this profile. And remember, one thing that we want to do when we're drawing this profile is we just want to draw half of it. Um, we don't want to draw the whole thing because uh, that'll double our work. We just don't want to draw half of it and then copy it across and mirror it. And so this is going to be about an inch and a half here. And it's going to come down maybe another inch and three quarters. So 1.75, something like that. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just roughing out the size of this. So, so maybe here we'll do a half inch from the middle and then at the bottom we're going to have a thickness that tapers from maybe like one and a quarter inches down to we'll call it three quarters of an inch. I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent right but that's going to get us pretty close. Um, this might actually be a little less than three quarters of an inch maybe like a half inch or something like that. And so now that we've got this tapered out, all we need to do is just come in here and kind of round off these edges. So all you have to do to do that is come in here and just kind of draw an arc across these edges. And most of them will probably smooth out on their own. You may get one or two where you need to come in here and manually kind of smooth that out. But you can see how it's fairly easy to draw our rail profile in here. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode over here and then I'm going to flip it using the scale tool. You could also right click on it and use the mirror tool. But now what we have is we have a profile that we can extrude in order to create our rail. So you can see how if I push pull this out this gives me a nice kind of rail profile in here. And uh, so we have this. Now what we want to do is we want to actually create a profile in here using Profile Builder. Um, and if you remember the profiles are the things that get extruded along a path. So in order to do that I'm just going to select this and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to open the profile dialog and I'm just going to click the plus button. When I click the plus button that's going to allow me to create a new profile. So in this case this is going to be rail and then we'll hit OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and bring this in as a profile that you can then edit. And in this case what we want is we want this to come in um, with the insertion point to be the bottom middle. So that's going to be the middle of this profile on the bottom. So now if I was to bring this in here, you can see how that's going to create this rail just like this. So, and you can go ahead and save this to your library if you want to keep it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to go and we need to start creating our assembly. And uh, to create our assembly, we're going to go over and we're going to open the assembly dialog. And so when we open the assembly dialog, if you remember, this is where we can start combining the different profiles and components that are going to get repeated along this path. So like for example, right now what I want to do is I want to add a profile member because the profile member is going to be our train track. So I'm just going to click on the plus button to add a profile member. And then you can either pick from your model or you can click on this button right here to use your profile dialog in order to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that since I already have this rail selected. I'm just going to go down and click OK. And so now this assembly is basically a single rail. 
And so we don't really need a single rail. What we need in here is we need a double rail. So we need two rails. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna click the plus button. And you can see how with the plus button, since I already had that profile selected, it's gonna add a second profile in here with um, that also has that also references back to that rail. So now, if I was to come in here and select this and update it, you can see how I've got a pair of rails on top of each other. Well, that's not what we want because we want these rails to be spread um, along a certain spacing. And so you can see how when this got brought in, this got brought in with an up-down offset and not a left-right offset, which is not what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our left or up-down offset to zero, then we're gonna go back and we're gonna set our left right offset to, we're gonna go ahead and set our left right offset to something like 32 inches. So that's going to, you can kind of see here, that's gonna space out your second profile by about 32 inches. So if I select this and go in and update it, you can see how now my two rails are in here and they're now spaced out. And so now, we have a profile that when we draw it, it's gonna bring in two, two rails that our train can run along. And so now what we need to do is we need to start adding our components, which is gonna be the repeating railroad ties. And so to create our railroad ties, we're just gonna create um, a profile or a rectangle that's gonna be, I believe something like eight feet long and probably about nine inches wide. And so we're just gonna draw a rectangle here that's gonna give us kind of the size of our railroad tie. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be about, we'll call it six inches thick. I'm not sure if that's the actual dimension of a railroad tie, but we'll go ahead and use that. And so what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to create a component with it. So I'm just gonna come in, I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna triple click on the whole thing to select it and I'm gonna click make component. In this case, I'm gonna call this railroad tie and click create. So now that's in here as a component. Well, what we want to do is we want to add it to our new assembly. So in order to do that, you're going to go into the component tab and you're going to click the plus button. And so when you click the plus button, that's going to bring in a new component item inside your model. But what we need to do is we need to pick it from the model in order to tell profile builder which profile to repeat. So in this case, you can see how I get this little eyedropper. And since this is a component, I get the green check mark. So I can go ahead and click on this and that's going to bring this in. So now if I select this, and I click on the apply assembly attributes in here, you can see how this is bringing those railroad ties in, but it's facing them the wrong direction. So what we wanna do is we wanna adjust the rotation of those to something like 270 degrees. Now if I click update again, you can see how those are facing the correct direction, but their spacing's wrong both this way and also this way. So we're just gonna adjust those things as well. So we'll take this item and we'll go ahead and give it a left right offset. We'll try 32 inches for right now and see what that does. Probably need to go to negative 32 inches. You can see how by giving a positive or a negative value, that's gonna affect which direction it's offsetting these railroad ties. So you can see how now they're centered on these items, but we have two more issues. We need to adjust the up down so that they're at the bottom of these railroad ties. So in order to do that, we're just gonna measure this height and it's five and seven eighths inches. So what we need to do is we need to apply a negative five and seven eighths inch offset here. So now our vertical spacing is about right and it looks like that might actually just be negative six inches. So we'll just put it to negative six inches. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to adjust our spacing because these railroad ties are too far, they're too far from each other right now or they're too far spaced out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm not 100% sure what the spacing on railroad tracks is. I'm sure someone's gonna be along shortly to tell me that I don't know anything about railroads and I would say you'd be correct. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set our spacing to 24 inches instead of eight feet. And then we're just gonna update this. Well, now you can see how this is placing a new railroad tie every two feet along here. So now, if we were to create a new version of this assembly, 
you can see how I can quickly and easily add this railroad in here um, along pretty much any path that I choose. So like for example, if I was to create an arc or something like that, I could use the uh, build along path in order to create a railroad that goes along that path. You have to be a little bit careful. You can see how um, you kind of get this segmented look depending on how many segments you have in here. But overall, this is a really fast way to do something like this. Um, you get a little weirdness in here, but depending on what you're doing, I don't think that's really going to be that big of a deal. Um, and then the last thing I would do, just because this looks a little bit generic right now, is I would probably come in and edit one of these components in order to give it kind of like a... Uh, one of the metal pieces that they use in order to uh, hold the railroad ties in, or the uh, railroad track in place. And so what I would do is, if you remember, each one of these is a component. So all I would have to do is just come add that inside of this. So for right now, probably what I would do is I would split this just so I can find the center. And then I would draw some kind of a plate in here. So maybe something that goes four inches this way four inches this way. I would probably go ahead and make that a component as well. We'll call this something like track. And then I would just model out the rest of this piece and you can make this look however you want it to look. So I'm going to speed up this part and then we'll take a look at our final result. All right, and so the nice thing about that change is that these little retainer pieces actually live inside of the components. So we don't have to do anything inside of our uh, assembly in order to make this work. So then the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could come in here and you could color these up. And again, because they're components, um, it's really easy to do that. You just color one of them and then uh, the others get colored as well. So if I was to color this with like this wood veneer material or something like that, you can do that really easily. Or maybe the wood lumber material and then probably what I would do is I would colorize it and make it a little bit darker. And that gives me more of a railroad feel on this. And you could also apply maybe like a darker gray color or something like that to the top of it. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Can you think of some other uses for Profile Builder? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.